Hello everybody. Um, today in this video we're gonna talk about a new uh, topic about the uh, differential equations and how uh, we can use Microsoft Excel to solve these differential equations and um, uh, what's the best way to solve the differential equations. Is it using Excel or something else? So back to the um, what we uh, were talking about in the very beginning of the uh, series is the type of equations. So we have two types of equations again this is the algebraic equations and the differential equation and since the beginning of this course uh, we were working on the algebraic equation and we saw uh, many different types of equations but uh, we didn't uh, deal with any differential equation so again uh, to revise quickly we saw the van der Waals equation, the material balance equation, the enthalpy equation for the heat balance, the Bernoulli equation we didn't do this but this is one very famous equation for uh, fluid mechanics and all these um, equations um, although they were kind of complicated in some cases that have like uh, high power or um, whatever but they uh, didn't have any differential term which is the d by dx or by dt so um, we saw how we can solve them by direct substitution or sometimes we did the iterations by doing the solver and goal seek um, but again, uh, to see what's the uh, difference between the algebraic and differential equations, on, I like to do this in uh, uh, an application that we use in our chemical engineering uh, uh, life. So we, we, we can compare the algebraic and differential equations uh, with the comparison between the continuous stirred tank reactor, which is uh, known as CSTR, and the plug flow reactor. So these are two famous types of, equi of, of um, uh, reactors. So for the CSTR, it's a very big tank. It's filled with the reactor reactants. They do the reaction, and then um, we put we put the feed with the uh, flow rate and composition, which is known. We let the reaction go, and then we uh, end up with the product, which is F uh, and the uh, concentration of the product. And the equation is simple because we assume because it's a very big tank, we assume that the composition inside is not affected by the feed composition, so the composition inside is the same as the composition in of the product. So we put the equation is the input, it's F uh, or the output is F by concentration of the product equals the F uh, multiplied by the concentration of uh, the feed and uh, this is uh, plus the sigma VR which is uh, the w we did before in the material balance and it's a very straightforward simple equation Differ uh, it's not differential it's algebraic equation and we can solve it pretty simply and this is the final form in case you have the reaction that we have here it's kc per n you'll just put this r kc per n and the sigma will be plus for product and negative for reactants and um, it's very simple for the plug flow reactor it's difficult it's it's not difficult i mean it's uh, different um so uh in this case you have the, the reactants you have the reactor with the length l and you have the reactants the same you can assume it's the same feed composition and flow rate and then the reaction goes throughout the whole reactor in most cases it's uh, a catalytic reactor so you have catalyst setting here and you have the feed uh, 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 passing through this catalyst increasing the reaction rate and then um, the product comes out from the other side and um, because at each increment you have a change in the uh, concentration and sometimes at the flow rate um, you, you cannot do what we did here. You you cannot assume that the concentration inside is homogeneous and it's the same as the product composition because it changes every incremental size, which is the dz. So in this case, you do um, your equation uh, based on an incremental uh, part of this reactor. So you assume you have an increment that's called dz, it's very small, and then it's at the distance z from the uh, inlet of this reactor, and then uh, there is an inlet concentration to this increment and the outlet concentration is the same as inlet that plus an incremental composition change. So this is because you ha you cannot do uh, uh, an equation that covers the whole thing in just uh, uh, one equation. So you have to do increment by increment. So we, we do a general increment and then we do our balance equation on this uh, increment. So you say that F uh, multiplied by DCI which is the product minus reactant equals sigma r dv which is the same as this but you have dv instead of v which is a dz because the area is constant and then without going into a lot of details this is the final form you have dz and dc and then the change of concentration per unit length is going to be calculated by this way so uh, in this case it's a differential equation and you cannot solve it in the same way you can solve this uh, equation because you cannot deal with this uh, directly 
without simplifying it or solving this uh, type of equation. So this is the problem. It's not a problem, but th this is the difference here. So how we solve the differential equation? So to the uh, high school uh, mathematics, we used to do this. If you have a differential equation that looks like this, you can separate each uh, the x on one side and the y on one side and put the uh, uh, limits of integration and do the integration and you end up with something like this. So uh, let's say you know y1, x1, x2, so you can calculate y2 uh, for any y1. So it's uh, called an analytical solution, which is converting the differential form into an algebraic form. So this is uh, very simple to solve, um, and it's a general uh, solution, so you can solve it for any value of x1, x2, or y1. So you don't have any problem with, with, with with dealing with this kind of equation but it's not the case in all differential equation it's not sometimes easy so let's say you have an equation like this you have dy by dx and then y power 2 and you have uh, trigonometric functions it's 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 difficult uh, to solve and sometimes it's not even able uh, or it's not solvable so in this case you have two uh, solutions uh, either to go for long analytical steps and, and there are um, lot of uh, forms of differentiation or I mean integration for different differential forms and there are specific forms for specific um, differential equations but you might have a form that's not uh, uh, available or it has no uh, analytical solution and the other case is to do uh, what's so called a numerical solution which is a solution that is uh, valid for one case for specific values of y1, x1, and x2. And we will go through this quickly. And there are different uh, types of uh, uh, analytical solutions, I mean numerical solutions. So there are, uh, this is what we said, specific differential equation with specific initial conditions and specific range. And th there are famous um, techniques to solve this numerical solution. There is Euler forward modified and backward, and there's a range cotta, and there's different type of range cotta and other um, uh, equations. So uh, we will go for range cotta because it's simple and it gives uh, good results. So let's go back to our uh, PFR equation. So th this is the final form that we did. So uh, we will apply the equation to the increment dz. So let's say you, uh, this is the uh, all the data that we have. So we have um, the uh, uh, composition and flow rate of the feed it's known and you 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 uh, set the value of this increment length so you can make it very small or make it bigger and as you make it smaller it gives more accurate results but it will give you a uh, longer time to solve or it require longer time to solve and then you the final uh, thing that you want to calculate is the uh, final uh, flow rate and composition and you know the f the, the whole length um, so what you do is you apply this equation to this increment and then you calculate C1 if you can say C1 um, which is the increment or the comp composition uh, at the exit of C1 and then you will apply the same thing calculate C2, C3 and go on so on so forth till you go uh, N-1 and N so this is the final uh, uh, one you, you calculate one and use it to calculate the next and so on so forth till you reach the, the last point of this um, uh, reactor. Um, so how to calculate Cn from Cn-1? minus This is uh, what the numerical solutions do. So um, for range cotta we need to, or for any uh, differential equation, we need to agree on something first that uh, if you have a differential equation, they usually, let's say this is the form of the differential equation, they usually put it in that form. It's f of x, is a function of x, and you want to integrate this function uh, of x. And uh, what this f this shape means is that whatever uh, you have here as an x is uh, if this changes then any x here will change in the same way so let's say this is f of 1 then each x like this and this will be 1 if you make it 5 it will be 5 if you make it x plus h then it will be x plus h so any uh, if you x plus h over two, uh, plus 2 over 2 then this will be x plus h over 2 so anything that will change in this brackets will be changing in any x uh, inside and the same if it's x and y if you change y then any y will change if in case you have y so um, uh, l l people in mathematics likes, like to say x and y so we will we will uh, use y instead of c and x instead of z um, I'm, I don't like doing X and Z a lot, but this is how we, we uh, 
we have to do it so for range cut the method the calculation steps are as uh, shown here so you calculate y n plus one which was c n plus one from c n it's from y n and then this is the h is the increment that you set uh, by yourself and this is k1 k2 k3 and k4 are stuff that we will go through right now so um, uh, these are the equations and I'll go uh, through them uh, quickly so for xn plus 1 it is the next x so uh, let's say the, the xn plus 1 it's the initial or, or the, the length uh, at which you are doing the calculation so in the beginning it was 0 so uh, to go to the next increment it would be the initial one which is 0 plus h which is the uh, increment length and then you increase h1 by h to go to the next increment and so on and so forth and for k1 it's just some uh, uh, variables that you calculate from the function which is uh, the differential equation it's not this so uh, you calculate it based on the values of xn and yn so you see what are the values that you got from the previous increment and you put them here apply them to the differential equation calculate k1 k2 k3 and k4 based on these uh, arguments inside the uh, brackets and then you take all these k's and put them here and from this you calculate yn plus 1 and then do this for the next to calculate yn plus 2 from, from yn plus 1 so it's kind of a long process and it takes some time but uh, we will see um, next time how uh, we are going to do the calculations using Microsoft Excel and we, we will do it in um, a simple um, case so it doesn't uh, require a long time and the aim of this video and the next video is to show you how it's difficult to use Excel uh, to do uh, differential equation calculations and how it's much easier to use some other software like MATLAB and uh, like Mathematica that they have modules that are built in modules that can do the differential equations uh, directly without doing the steps manually so uh, I'll see you next time and